Good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Middleton um, with our next instructional video. Um, again, we're flipping the information so you take ownership of what you're doing. And remember, you can come back and uh, watch these videos as you need to. You can come back and watch them as reference. Mr. Middleton will have these uh, in Google Classroom and they will also be embedded uh, within the assignment. But this is our previous one. Um, you know, we did this one yesterday. This is what Mr. Middleton calls a sundial exercise, where we have a central light source. And from that central light source, which we're gonna draw, because every time we draw, it makes us uh, develop. Uh, if we're seeing something in our head, we put it on paper, we're getting that skill. But anyway, um, we made these little marks first along like where the hands of a clock would go. And then we draw the form, in this case it was the cube. And then we shade each form according to how that light is you know, shining on it, and hence the cast shadows. Again, why this exercise is so important? Because oftentimes as young artists, you know, we learn how to shade the form, but we neglect the shadows, which make the picture, okay? So um, our next form that we're going to do, and Mr. Milton has to switch sketchbooks here, run out of paper. Let me get my new sketch, but well, it's not a new one. It's just one that I had some extra paper in. Um, the materials that I'm gonna use today, again, I'm gonna use an old number two pencil. Um, gonna use a pencil that has an eraser. And then for some extra shading, and for those of you that might have the sketching pencils at home, I'm using, I don't know if you can see this number or not, but I'm using a, this is a 4H pencil uh, to do a little bit of a, uh, blending with it as we go. But before we start, you know, we always like to do some type of warm-ups. So we're gonna go ahead and put today's date. Today is September 3rd. So I'm gonna put 9, 3, 20. And we'll just warm up here in the top section of our sketchbook. And again, this is my first uh, activity of the day. So to kind of get my hand and everything kind of going, um, of course, I like to start off with a gradient each morning, you know, because usually I'm gonna use a gradient of some type when I'm shading. So I'm going back and forth, going back and checking. How can you check your success of your gradients? By letting your eyes go slightly out of focus, and then you can see, just like what I'm doing here, I'm letting my eyes go slightly out of focus as I look at it, and then I can see where I need to maybe blend it out just a little bit more. So that's my first gradient of the morning. I'm gonna come up here and make one up here in an opposite direction. Again, I like to create some contrast. Uh, first thing in the morning, again, helps me start to see things artistically, okay? Just a couple of them go in a different direction. La 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 la. If, again, if I go off the frame just a little bit, I'm very, very sorry because uh, I am holding this thing with my hand. Um, and then, you know, we can make a couple of lines. You can go right over top of your gradients, make some wavy lines, straight, uh, diagonal, dots, curved, really curved. Again, just make some marks, get your hands going, get your eyes going, just get it going on. Okay, this is again, this is how I like to do warm ups. Just getting things, just flexing, okay? Just kind of getting things going. I love doing warm-ups. They can be totally random, they can be totally cool. And, you know, you might also start to get ideas and things like that again as you work on your warm-ups. So that's my, that's my warm-up. Got some dark lines, some light lines, some very light lines, light marks. Um, so yeah, there's my warm-up this morning. Um, may have to sharpen my pencil in a moment, but I think it'll work for right now. So, as we did yesterday, so we're gonna come on down and we're gonna start our sundial exercise. We're gonna go ahead and just make the line, okay? This is our workspace. So, what we're going to do first, we're gonna start off with a circle, okay? See, by doing those warm-ups, that allowed me to make that circle fairly quickly, all right? Don't have to make the circle very dark because we're gonna have our forms going around it. We are working with, oh, by the way, we are working with, let's see, the sundial, 
and we are working with cylinders. Okay, cylinders. I may have spelled that wrong. Oh well. Um, all right, so real quick on the cylinder before we get started. Remember that uh, for a cylinder, we start with an ellipse and then we draw the sides, okay? And then we just draw the bottom and we make sure the bottom is aligned to the top, okay? That's all we gotta do. So if we imagine the back side of this cylinder is parallel to the top, okay? And we can also, you know, we can change that up a little bit. We can make it like this, where we see a little more of the top. This is more eye level. This is more bird's eye view. And then we can do one like this, where it is, where you're looking up to the bottom, and that would be a worm's eye view. Okay, so if you need to, at first today, maybe in some other areas in your sketchbook, um, practice drawing a couple of cylinders first. So when you put them into your sundial, they look like cylinders. So, you know, we might be drawing our cylinder and then the bottom looks flat. All right, we don't want that. We want the bottom again to line up with the top. Okay, all right, so here in the middle, we're gonna draw our light source again. As I've said before, anytime, you know, we draw, we're getting a little bit better. So I like to use an old light bulb. Okay. And I'll put the little filaments in there, add a little reflections. And let me clean this up just a little bit. I don't like the way that looks. Like Mr. Middleton, you're spending an awful lot of time just on the center of this thing. Well, I, I want my sketchbook to look, you know, I want it to look good, okay? So, again, nobody else is really gonna see this but me, but I still understand that it's part of my development, okay? So there's my light bulb. And like we did before, we're gonna draw some light waves so we know or indicate that this is where the light is coming from, okay? All right, now we'll go to the top. Remember, we are referencing like, our, like a, uh, a clock face, all right? Remember, we used to use sundials in ancient times to determine the times of the day, okay? So here, here, and here. We'll come over and we'll make one here, okay? Then we've got these sections or these spaces that are in between, okay? Let's divide these in half, like so. Come here, and basically one here. And I'm gonna move that one. Find my eraser. It's pretty much in the right spot, but again, I don't want it to interfere with my drawing, okay? All right, so didn't leave quite enough room up here on the top, but that's okay. All right, so um, to start off with, I'm gonna go ahead and do the one down here on the, on the bottom. Um, so I'm going to start with an ellipse, okay? And then I'm going to draw the sides. Okay, and then I'm going to draw the bottom and just kind of make sure that it's lining up with the top. I'll come up here to this one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna draw a cylinder, trying to keep it like the one I just drew, at least the same size, kind of the same size, and just do your best. And we will make the bottom, make sure the bottom lines up with the top, move up, Yeah, Mr. Middleton, wow, man, I'm drawing these things so much. Exactly. That's the intention of the exercise, okay? Um, that's how we learn how to draw. There's no easy way about it. Um, in order to learn how to draw, we have to draw. Come up. And as you've heard me say before, 
repetition, oops, repetition, and more repetition will give you confidence and help you develop and you will become a better artist by doing so. Coming up, I'm just going to erase this mark completely because I've totally left it, leave myself enough room. So I'm gonna come here, but I'm gonna put my, my ellipse, as you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna draw the sides, okay? I'm gonna make sure the bottom lines up to the top. Then look at that. Easy, easy. I'll come over here. I want to draw my lips. I'm trying to keep the same size as I've done the other ones, okay? Draw the side. Draw the side. Oopsie daisy. Again, I'm drawing this through looking at my iPad my phone, okay, so here, all right. And we haven't talked about shadow, you know, the shadow placement yet, but it's very, oop, ooh, that does not look good. So let me go ahead and take my eraser, using my critical thinking skills, get those little flakes off there, eraser flakes, and let me just loosen up just a little bit, get a little more sketchy, okay? Bring it on down. Bring it on down, okay? Make sure the bottom lines up to the top. Again, very similar to what we did yesterday. And um, if you were in one of my other classes, we also did this with some other stuff too. But for beginners, you've done the cone and the cube. Intermediate, you did the cube yesterday. You will be working on cylinders no, excuse me, you'll be working on cones today. But anyway, that doesn't matter. I'll, I'll talk to each one of you during class on that. But anyway, the uh, here we have the cylinders lined up according to a central light source. Some of our shadows might go off just a little bit, okay? Now, um, we'll go ahead and start with this one here at 12 o'clock. So, remember this, we'll get a like a draw or indicate you know, how that light wave would be hitting that form. And on this one, this is kind of a tricky one, but we imagine again the surface or the table or whatever this object is sitting on, more of it's going back here, okay? So this shadow is going to basically kind of go out like this, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil and just shade in my shadow the best that I can. Okay, right there. Now, the best way to understand the shadows, as you've heard me mention before, is to, you could take like a paper towel roll or you could take um, a thermos or a cup or something like that, so anything that's cylindrical, set a light source in front of it and study the shadows. That's the best way. So we got our shadow on this one done <laughs> because this morning to study the shadows, what I did, ah, you see how the shadow is coming out like this. So if the light's coming this way, how that shadow kind of just kind of spreads out like that, okay? Um, do I have another cylinder here? Uh, yeah, we have kind of one, I have a paper towel roll here, but you see how that shadow goes out like that. And you see how the shadow gets a little bit lighter the further away you get, but it's darker right here. Oh, and I love this. Here you can see that the gradient happening with the cylinder. I love how you can see a little bit of the ambient light coming here to the side, okay? All right, so for the cylinder itself, um, the core shadow would be kind of like behind there just a little bit, but still we're going to put, we're gonna go here and get lighter to the center, a little dark at the edge and get lighter toward the center. And then on the top, We'll put just a little bit of shading in there, okay? Now, this is getting lost with this. So 
So let's just maybe darken in that shadow just a little bit to create some contrast. And this could be the lighting in my room too, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little emphasis there so we can see it out of the shadow, okay? That's our first one. Come here like this. This is our light, okay, our light wave. We'll go ahead and do our gradient on this one. We'll start with the dark side back here, okay? And we'll get lighter and lighter and lighter as we get to the light source, like that. And we'll put a little bit of shading here on the top, just a little bit. A little bit of that light might be cast there. So the shadow will go like this. So if we imagine that ellipse back here, that edge, that shadow is gonna kinda of go off like that. And we'll just fill it in. Again, the best way to get shadows is to observe stuff and then draw the shadow. Y'all remember that because we are going to have I believe an assignment. I'm going to ask you to find objects like this and then study the shadows. But anyway, this next one, here's our light source. Boom, boom. So the light here, this way, that's where that shadow is gonna go. The shadow's gonna go like that. So if this side is opposite the light, it's gonna be the darkest. Okay, and we're going to get lighter as we get to the highlight. I'm gonna put a little bit of darker value back here, have it get lighter to the front. Then I'm going to fill in my shadow, okay? Now, what I'm doing here again is, is kind of sketchy, um, but when we do formal drawings, this is what they're gonna look like. They're gonna look nice and blended and awesome with the value scale and all this good stuff. This is what we kind of want, this is what we want to avoid right here, okay? Scratchy, 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 okay? I think we can all, you know, agree that we can do really good work if we put our mind to it. So we have this, so the light wave is coming this way. So I'm going to put my core shadow back here. Get lighter as I get to the front. This is where my shadow is gonna go. Just like this. Do, 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 do. Now, um, don't get in the, ha you see me kind of drawing the lines that outline the shadow. I usually don't do that, but again, I'm demonstrating. Um, if this were my artwork, oops, those lines would be very, very, very light. And again, I apologize um, if I go out of frame, okay? So I'm gonna bring the edge of my shadow in here, making sure I'm using the right side of my pencil. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill in my shadow Boop, 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 just like this. But we know shadows don't have dark lines around them or on the, you know, on the edges of them. But again, we're just working with our sketchbook and we're practicing. So we got that shadow. We'll move over. Draw our light wave. Draw our light wave. Okay. So the front's getting the most of the light. So our core shadow will be back here. And it'll get lighter to the front here and then it gets lighter to the front and then our shadow goes off like this I love drawing shadows um, again even drawing after all these years it still fascinates me what you can do on paper okay and again this is more or less just a sketch 
and an exercise. And what I like to do is get my initial, you know, work done. And then what I like to do is go in with uh, my 4H pencil, if you have one, or you could just use your number two pencil and just, you know, enhance things, practice your shading a little bit more, you know, and make things look a little bit more better. All right, here's my light wave. That's where my shadow is gonna go. See, the, the more we go, the, the more you shade and do these, the more understanding you're gonna have. And then you can translate or transfer these skills to any other object, okay? Like arms, uh, the body of a dog, a portrait, like, you know, like a human head. Um, anything that has cylinders in it. And there are a lot of stuff out there, a lot of objects out there, oop, I can't go that way, that have cylinders. So I don't like that shadow right there. I think that's a little too much on the side. So let me fix this, oopsie. Again, I'm working with one hand here and trying to film at the same time. So please forgive me, all right? So, am I using this one? Yeah. All right, so just let me fix this up. Yeah, I'm not liking this cylinder at all. So I'm using my critical thinking. My critical thinking, essential 21st century skill. It's critical thinking, okay? My critical thinking said, man, I don't like that. Okay, there we go. All right, now this is where our shadow is gonna go. Let's just take it like this. We might have a little bit of disagreement on this side, but again, I think we're getting the right idea. So I'm gonna take that shadow on out. How far should the shadow go? Try to stretch it out like I'm doing. Again, just kind of have fun with it. See, you know, and as you do it, appreciate how it's looking, okay? Like, whoa, that really looks like a cylinder with a cast shadow as you go all the way around, okay? We'll come up here. <clears throat> light wave. Uh, light wave. So this is the bright spot or the highlight. Back here is where the core shadow is going to go. I'm gonna get light, here's my gradient. I'm gonna get lighter as I get to the front. Let me put a little bit of value here and another gradient up on the top. My shadow is going this way. Because you see how my light is coming, okay? So like this, like this. Kinda hard for me to get an angle over there and not block my light source. Okay. There's my other shadow and my shaded form. I'm gonna move all the way around and then my last one. Here's my light source. Ooh, I'm gonna have to sharpen my pencil here in a moment. Here's my light source. Here's my light source waves. Heading toward this cylinder. Oops. The back side is gonna get the least amount of light. So that's where my core shadow is gonna go. Then I'm gonna get lighter as I get to the front. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a little gradient right there too, because it seems like it would be kind of going that way. And let me enhance the top of this just a little bit. Again, crucial critical thinking. And part of this too is Working on your form drawing as well. I mean, there's so many things involved in this one exercise and that's why I like it. Because again, if you're a beginner, you're getting practices or you're getting some good experience drawing these forms that maybe you didn't have before. For intermediate, it's serving as a review. And advanced, proficient, you know, this is also serving as a review for you as well. And as artists, I promise you, <clears throat> drawing is a perishable skill and if you don't practice it you will lose it okay so 
even like you see me here, even if I wasn't drawing these things for a class, I would still have sketchbooks full of things like this to help me keep my skills. Cause you know, I'm gonna draw, you know, whether I'm a teacher or not, I'm gonna be an artist, whether I'm a teacher or not. Okay. Cause that's just part of it. You know, I would be a teacher, excuse me. Well, I'm a teacher of course, but, um, Art is something I will make and produce until, you know, I can't because that's just part of my being, okay? All right, this is our completed cylinder sundial exercise, okay? So um, when you finish today, all right, um, I'd like you to take a snapshot of your work and upload it to Canvas, all right? Mr. Middleton is gonna be here to answer your questions if you have any concerns or anything like that, okay? But in total, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Now, if you finish early, <coughs> for the, you know, for the, cause again, you know, it doesn't take that long to do the exercise, you know, considering that class is only an hour. Um, but if you do finish early, go back and enhance your cylinders, okay? Um, work on your shadows, okay? Um, you could even go in between and do smaller cylinders if you wanted to, and then do the same thing and fill in those spaces in between. That's for like some of my more advanced students. But if, you know, if you're new to this and you're brand new, which is okay as well, which is fine, you could go in and just add these other ones, just draw them smaller, okay? Oopsie and do the same thing that we did, do your cast shadow, do your shading, and you know, all that good stuff, okay? You could also come in here into your margins and you might draw things that are, you know, like a traffic cone. You might draw things like this, again, that, uh, well, it's a cone, but it's got a cylinder, you know, that's part of it, okay? So again, you could come up here and draw forms that, or any of your available space, and draw forms that have components of the cylinder, the cone. Again, it's practice, okay? Main thing though, finish up your sundial cylinder exercise, and then upload a picture of your work for participation credit into Canvas, okay? All right, everyone, have a great day, bye.